Um, here is my um, sample chi-squared um, test problem. Um, I chose the topic of EACIB math classes and my two variable situation is nationality is one variable and um, IB math choice is the other variable. So in the second year of the EAC IB math program, <clears throat> Hakel, the IB um, coordinator, noticed that there seemed to be a dependency of IB math choices on student nationality. She performs a chi-squared test at the 5% significance level. So she sees the following um, statistics uh, observed. Um, the total uh, number of students is 80 and uh, the distribution is um, like this. So the first uh, question I ask is state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. <clears throat> well, the null hypothesis um, is that the IB math course choice is independent from student nationality. Remember that the null hypothesis is always uh, assuming that the two variables are independent, okay? And then the alternative hypothesis, which you can write H1, H subscript 1, is always the opposite, that they are not independent. Let me fix this, independent, okay? Um, and then the second thing I ask is, show that the expected frequency for Korean students taking math studies is 8.75. Okay, so um, Korean students taking math studies, so that would be this number here. Uh, the number that, uh, the, that was really observed was 5. The frequency that was observed was 5. But uh, what if it was a truly independent distribution? What, this sh what should this be? And uh, so this should be around 8.8. .8. And the reason why it should be 8.8 .8, um, is uh, an independence calculation that we are going to do here, which is that we are going to uh, take the percentage, the percentage of students in this row times the percentage of students in this column and then we're going to get what percentage should come out in this uh, number if it was independent okay so that would be this percentage would be 35 divided by the total of 80 okay and 35 divided by 80 is 44 percent and this column is 20 divided by 80 is 25 percent so this is 25 percent times <clears throat> 44% and 25 times 44% gives us 11% and then we multiply 11% times the total number of students which is 80 and that gives us 8.8 .8 students. So uh, if this was an independent distribution then this 5 would have been 8.8 .8. and the way we calculated it was 44% times 25% equals 11% multiply 11% times 80 and we get 8.8 .8, .8, okay instead it's 5 so 5 is um, pretty far away from 8.8, .8. okay. Um, show that the degrees of freedom is 2. Well, <clears throat> remember that degrees of freedom is um, the, the uh, numbers in this 2 by 3 table that you are free to choose. And so we choose, let's say, the 25 and the 15. Once we choose the 25 and the 15, you're locked into these other numbers because you need to respect these subtotals here. So once you choose 25, this has to be 20. Once you choose 15, this has to be 5. And once you choose 25 and 15, then to total up to 45, this has to be 5, right? So these three numbers are definitely not chosen by you once you already choose 25 and 15, right? And what about the 10? Well, once you have 15, 5, 5 here, this has to be 10, right? So uh, the white numbers, you're not free to choose once you choose the two yellow numbers. So the degrees of freedom is 2. Now, how would you get this with the formula? Well, it's, this table is 2 by 3. But the ones that you're free to choose are actually um, 1 less than the number of rows times 1 less times 1 less um, from the number of columns. So instead of 2 by 3, we basically have 1 
by 2 and so we have 2 so there's a couple ways of explaining this but basically the formula is like number of rows minus 1 times number of columns minus 1 and that will give you 2 so our degrees of freedom is 2 and then the next thing I ask is write down the chi-squared calc value um, well we need to use the calculator to do that okay so we are going to uh, input this data into the second matrix screen. Oops, let's turn it on. Second matrix, and we'll put it into A. So we go to Edit, A, and we're going to put a 2 by 3 matrix, 2 by 3, and then we're going to put in these data 25 and 20, 25, 20. And then we go to the next column and we're going to put 15 and 5. And then we go to the next column and we put 5 and 10. Okay, and then we are going to run the um, chi squared test. So we go to stat test. And we go to the C option, which is chi-squared test. And uh, it already has A as the observed um, table, which is what we're putting in. The expected table B is empty because it, this uh, test is actually going to fill in the ex expected table. Then we go into the calculate. And then we can see it gives us degrees of freedom of 2, which we've already found. It gives us a chi-squared value of 6.067. And it gives us a p-value of uh, 0 0.0481. I'm going to put that here. p-value equals 0 0.0481. chi-squared equals 6.07. Um, if we want to take a look at the expected uh, frequencies, we go to the second matrix, and then we'll look at B. Easiest way to look at it is to pretend you're going to edit it. Okay, and then this gives us the matrix. Remember how we already showed that the number of Koreans taking math studies, the expected frequency would be 8.8? .8? Well, there it is, 8.75. Okay, so... Um, that's where we got that, okay? Um, so, you know, what is the chi-squared test? Well, the chi-squared test compared this table with this table. And so, like, you can see the 25-20 distribution is actually pretty close to the expected 25-20, right? Now, the Korean uh, students' distribution is a little bit different. 15-5, we were expecting 11.25, 8.75. And the other nationalities, we were expecting 8.4, 6.5, but we got 5 and 10. So um, when we take all the differences of, you know, the expected values with these values and we square them when we divided by the expected values, we ended up with a chi-squared 6.07. Um, so the chi-squared value is 6.07. And then uh, the critical value is 5.99, they tell us. Um, and so if, six, if uh, the chi-squared value is above 5.99, that means that we reject the null hypothesis. So it's barely over it. 6.07 is slightly over 5.99, so we do reject the null hypothesis. Okay, and um, what about for the p-value? Well, the p-value is 0 0.0481, and remember that the uh, significance level is 5%. So the question is, is 0 0.0481 less than 5%? And it is slightly, right? 0 0.0481 is less than 0 0.05, which is 5%. Remember, you have to put 0 0.05. So we reject the null hypothesis also. Okay. And uh, that is the explanation.